<laughs> I kind of like that name. Volume. What is up, everyone? Thank you for 3,000 subs. For today's video, we will be reworking Spirit Eye Selene. I had some help in my Discord from some Discord members and, you know, subscribers. Uh, they helped me kind of do this, and I appreciate the help because, honestly, the rework turned out a lot better than I, you know, initially thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be as simple as just changing the S1. No, we changed... We, we, we buffed her in every aspect of her kit slightly not overly buffed but buffed her so that way she's going to age well in 2023 because this unit needs a buff and she needs to be done the correct way and i think the best way of doing so is keep her how she is but just buff everything about her to make her more consistent and be more impactful on the fights so if you are new to the channel be sure to subscribe we're on our way to 4,000 subs now and yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go into the Spirit Eye Selene rework. But before we do, I will break down her kit one last time for you guys because we did it yesterday. Just, you know, so you can kind of get it before and after, right? So we're gonna start with her S2, go to her S3, and then go to her S1. Uh, I do really want this unit to get buffed. This is why I'm pushing this video out. So maybe it goes around and gets heard about and the people are like in the, in the, on, you know, the dev team are like, oh, these, you know, these content creators want this unit buffed. I bet you we should buff her, or we should buff her. Buff her! <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and do it. So her ult sixth sense is damage suffered in one attack does not exceed 51% of max health. At max, this will be 70. Uh, decreases skill cooldown by one turn. When someone dies and acquires five souls, effects upon death are activated once per turn upon hero's death. We'll go into the actual S2 now. Sixth Sense completely reworked, though we just not really reworked, but added onto it. So it's still got the same thing effects upon death one turn. Damage suffered in one attack does not exceed 70% of max health, grants immortality and stealth for one turn when the cast receives lethal damage, decreases skill cooldown by one turn when someone dies, and acquires five souls. Effect upon death are only activated once per game upon receiving lethal damage. All right, so it's the same passive, but we just added more to it uh, and slightly adjusted so it's not broken. So the one uh, once per game thing is going to be the immortality and the stealth buff. That is the once per game thing, right? Uh, that way you can get a second chance with Spirit Ice and Lean to come back with because in her current kit, you could just literally dispel her or you, you can like which Iceria can literally kill her when her buff comes out, right? She can just literally hard counter her. So this way... Spirit Ice Lane doesn't get hard counter, her essence stays the same, but she has a second chance to actually be a good anchor and a solo carry. Because her biggest flaw right now is that you could just dispel her and kill her, right? There's no, there's no flaw to her. Or there's no, there's no like, there's, there's no other way to word it around. She could just die. At least this way, you can stay safe. You can stay, uh, you can get your mortality up, you can stay stealth for a turn, you give you, it gives you a turn to come back. You, you have one turn, get some lifesteal online, and come back, and then they have to do it again, right? They have to do, technically in theory, they have to kill her twice, right? So that's going to be her S2, her new passive, with the granting immortality and stealth, and only activating that part of the passive once per game, right? Everything else is still the same, she's still getting her normal souls, she's still doing the damage suffering, uh, it's still all the same, right? Guys, so going into her S3, I hope you guys you like that S2. The S3, in my opinion, uh, is okay, but it could be better, right? Spirit Gate Burning Possession w opens the gate of the spirit by spelling all the buffs from the caster and making the caster possess for three turns. Revives all dead allies before granting immortality to allies for one turn, right? There's a lot of issues with this. One, um, she doesn't take an she doesn't do any damage in this. Two, you can just dispel the immortality, making it rendering it useless. And three. Um, she doesn't actually take a turn this turn. Like, her turn is just reviving and being possessed. That's it. She doesn't do anything else. She's just there to stand there, look cute, and do nothing. So we're going to change that a little bit to help her out a bit to be more impactful in the fight. So let's go into the actual S3 that I would like to see instead. Now, her new S3, uh, for her, it's going to be kind of similar. Uh, Spirit, uh, Spirit Gate Burning Possession, um, opens the gate of the Spirit Dispelling all debuffs from the caster and making the caster possess for four turns. Revives all dead allies before granting immortality to the allies for one turn and giving the caster an extra turn. So what we did is we took her extra turn soul burn effect and we slapped that on this 
and in return we gave her an extra turn of being possessed that way when you use your extra turn she still has three turns of possession right because the issue is if you just slap an extra turn on this that gives her two turns of possession we want to keep the core essence of spirit ice and leave we want to keep it the same but we want to give her a bit more to make her a bit more usable in more situations this way when you take her turn you pop her s3 she still has three turns of possession right it still functions the same way because you're using that extra turn which is your extra turn for possession to you know go to the three turns so she gets her she gets a free attack essentially right she's able to do her attack right and still keep her three turns of possession up the only thing that's changing here is that she's getting an extra turn everything else is the same her, her possessed time is still the same it's just she's getting herself an extra turn off her s3 to make it to where she's more impactful when she takes her turn really like this design i really like the idea of it and um i think the way this is going to play out if if she would ever get something like this would just make her a little more consistent right all right we're gonna go on to our last go which is the s1 uh, let me know so far what you guys think of this kit that we're changing and how we're changing it um also yeah if you are new to this channel be sure to subscribe if you would like to me to go in the discord you know buff another unit potentially just you know for fun I will do that. I'm only doing this for her because she's like my favorite unit and I really want to see this unit buffed. So let's go to S1. S1 originally was Mighty Strike. Attacks all enemy with a sheath when this skill is used. If it was not triggered by a dual attack, has a 35 chance percent or have a 35% chance to use Nimble Sword instead of Mighty Sword, uh, Mighty Strike. When the caster's possessed effect is doubled, this skill does not trigger a dual attack. Nimble Sword dispels one debuff from the cast before swiftly attacking the enemy penetrates the target defense by 35%. Soul burn effect costs 20 souls, grants an extra turn, right? There's a lot going on here, but not actually not really that much. Uh, the main issue with this skill is that it's inconsistent. You're not getting nimble sword every turn, which is really stupid when you have to take a turn to do nothing, right? So we're gonna fix this S1 up to make it more consistent. So here's the new S1. Now, for her last change, yes, we did her change her S1 to what it should have been all along for Mighty Strike. Attacks the enemy with the sheath when this skill is used. If it was not triggered by a dual attack, has a 50% chance, hear me? 50% chance to use Nimble Sword instead of Mighty Strike. When this caster is possessed, effect chance is doubled. Has a chance to dispel one buff when a successful hit. This skill does not trigger a dual attack. Nibble Sword dispels one debuff from the caster before swiftly attacking the enemies. Penetrates the target's defense by 35%. And then our new soul burn effect is still going to cost 20 souls, but it greatly increases the amount of damage dealt. Does not trigger a dual attack. Two things are changed this way, right? Two things. She's going to guarantee do her Nibble Strike on, and also has a chance to dispel a second buff. That way she can get through barriers better that way she can get through immortality better that way she's just better all across the board um this way she has a chance to do a second to dispel right it's not guaranteed it's a chance based off if you hit so that's the new spirit ice lean kit i think this would be very good for her in the aging process too because one it still keeps to her core essence two it's not completely absurdly broken like we didn't just go well, doom 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 and just like completely buff her up to where she's insane we kept the same idea of her kit because we love the way she is but we slightly buffed her now you could say the soul burn effect could just be increases damage dealt instead of greatly increases damage dealt but that's kind of like that's kind of where it kind of you know where the line draws for me is like is greatly increasing broken or is it fine because let's be honest um she needs the lifesteal back, and the best way to get lifesteal is by doing Ooga Booga damage, right? So, that's the changes for Spirit Ice and Lean. I don't know where I'm going to put this in the video. I don't know how I'm going to do this video. It's going to be a short one. That's why I need to do something else. Maybe like an RTA match or something beforehand. We'll see. But, that's going to be the changes for Spirit Ice and Lean. So, yeah. I really do like this um, change. I hope, you know, word gets around and this, you know, kind of strays. Like, it kind of just ends up in the devs pool of buff lists and they get some good ideas from this Devs, take it it's free i did your job for you actually we did your job for you but yeah we'll uh we'll see uh, if you guys do like these changes and think this is something i should post on the forums let me know in the comments below because i do want to push for a spirit eye buff as soon as possible and uh Something like this would be a cool way to make her a lot more valuable for the long run. But anyways, I guess that's going to be the video. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe if you'd like me to go in the Discord and, you know, you know, get the members to rally up and, uh, you know, do more buffs or reworks or whatever for maybe units that might need it in 2023. Just for a base idea of what, you know, might send ideas to the devs way. 
be sure to let me know. Once again, this video was for fun. Thank you for 3,000 subs. And yeah, you guys have an amazing day. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.